inside Colorado Green Labs, Frank Conrad is testing strains of cannabis for levels of their active ingredient called THC. And he wants to start testing for pesticides. I think that it's going to have to be come to the forefront as a testing priority. Pesticides are known to be toxic to humans. And they know that they're actually appearing in these products in really high levels. For Conrad, pesticide testing isn't just about making revenue. I think it's a public health concern. Denver, the city and county of Denver, clearly recognizes it's a public health concern because they've been inspecting and quarantining plants. Since the beginning of the year, the city and county of Denver has placed holds on tens of thousands of cannabis plants all across the city because they found residue of unapproved pesticides to kill things like this. Powdery mildew is a, it's a type of mold that it basically feeds off the plant. It grows fast. It will cover an entire room and then it will basically destroy the value of that crop. That's probably one of the principal uh, agents, I think, that's affecting like the marijuana crop right now. The pesticide best known for killing off powdery mildew is called Eagle 20. Eagle 20 was one of the first pesticides identified by Denver. Miclobutanol, which is the active ingredient in Eagle 20, is known to be low toxicity if humans ingest it. Inhaling it, though, is if it's burned and generating hydrogen cyanide, that's an entirely different problem. Hydrogen cyanide is a toxic gas most notorious for its use in Nazi concentration camps during World War II. And it's produced when Eagle 20 is burned, which poses a pretty serious threat for consumers. The popular pesticide is also commonly mixed with a solvent that can pose a threat to workers inhaling those fumes. And yet, there's a lot of money in protecting these crops. Millions of dollars, in fact. When viewed nationally, hundreds of millions. Three states now allow the sale of marijuana for adult recreational use. And for the tens of thousands of workers in the industry, more than 20,000 in Colorado alone, these pesticides could cause lasting illnesses. Workers should have um, protective equipment so that they're not constantly getting exposed to it. Part of this is a ventilation issue. On the inside, you're actually accumulating the fumes and the workers are getting exposed to them. Short-term exposure to it, you can get ill, but your body will recover. Long-term chronic exposure is associated with a number of different health risks, but particularly neurodegeneration. That, I think, is one of the clearest risks to uh, workers if they are not wearing protective equipment while applying pesticides to marijuana. But cannabis is still federally illegal, meaning that the feds have not yet provided any resources or guidance to ensuring worker protection, which means it's up to the states. In Colorado, ensuring worker safety is up to him, Michael Rigerasi. Currently, I think our um, inspectors have reached probably about 100 facilities. But there are more than 1,000 licensed cultivators in the state. The issue is that without the resources of the federal government, it's difficult for a state-level agency to have the resources to effectively bring in regulation in a timely manner. They're doing what they can. They're chipping away at the problem. but. There's always going to be agricultural pathogens and there will be a need for pesticides potentially to treat them. The EPA says they're willing to work with the states, but the process takes a long time. Meanwhile, complaints just keep coming in, revealing hazardous use of pesticides and dangerous environments for employees. But the rules are there, it's just a matter of following them. There are continually changing sets of rules. We're also looking at the worker protection standard changing within the next six months. Overexposure to pesticides can make people sick, leading to missed days of work and school. It's going to be a lot of seminars and meetings to get people aware of the new changes. We're all trying to play catch up to an actual agricultural industry. Pat Curra is a cannabis grower and he hopes that these trainings will bring legitimacy to the industry. Now that we can follow the same regulations as, say, corn farmers, uh, Palisade farmers, we can start to be looked at as an actual industry and not something that's, you know, swept under the rug. Let's not talk about it. Let's actually be here and be a part of the, a part of the agriculture industry. But without swift and consistent enforcement, thousands of workers in Colorado and across the nation are at risk of harmful exposure to toxic chemicals. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Katie Wilcox.